Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky with another powerful point to ponder St. Stephen Baptist Church as we spend daily meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining us. My God, what an exciting time we had yesterday. Thank you for being with us in worship last night. And uh, today we're going to continue our study of racism. Racism is whenever a person or a group of people have been excluded from opportunities simply on the basis of their skin color or ethnic origin. And it is not a misdemeanor in the Bible. Racism is a sin. It's a sin. It is the sin of America. We love to talk about in the church about the slavery of sin, but we don't talk much about the sin of slavery. And the and slavery, racism, oppression is a sin. And already we're looking at what racism is. And today we're going to look at what is the fourth letter in racism. And let's look at what it is. This is what constitutes racism in the United States. First of all, resources, an unequal distribution of resources. This is what the church, if we're concerned about racism, if you're talking to whites about what, what we have to do to bring blacks and whites together and heal the racial divide, tell them we have to address the each issue of waste, maldistribution of resources. A, access, that whites have access because of their social capital that black people don't have, that there must be affirmative action initiatives to make sure there's an equal, that all people have access. C has to do is overcoming biases and stereotypes, questioning black people's competency, that black people can do more than dribble a basketball, run a football, run around a track, rap or entertain. Black people uh, can master technology, black people can master coding, that black people uh, have the competency to do anything anyone else does if given an equal opportunity. Here's another part of racism in the United States of, of, of America, and that is incarceration. Incarceration. And this is something that the Biden-Harris administration should be pushed by Black America to fix because President Biden helped to create the carceral, the incarceral state that we have in which there are so many black men who are incarcerated. And he created that in 1986 with crime legislation when and the 1994 uh, crime bill, 86 and 1994 crime bill that he proudly calls the Biden bill that put so many black men in jail. Why were black men put in jail and to what degree have we been put in jail? Well, if you take all of the women around the world, billions of women around the world, and if you take just the black men that are in this country, just the United States of America, uh, there are more black men in jail then there are women in jail around the world. That's incredible. Black men might make up maybe about, oh, five to six percent of American society, five or six percent. But we constitute about 50 percent of those who are incarcerated. Now, I want you to think about that. Six percent of the population, black males are. But yet we are 50% of the incarcerated. Either there's something wrong with black men, which means black men are, must be the most innately criminal element in the history of the world, or there's something wrong with the system and structures. And I will submit to you that there's something wrong with the system and the structures that has put so many black men in jail. What, cre what accelerate the, the the mass incarceration was the fact that the economy changed. Back in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and 70s, there was an industrial base where men could go and work uh, just having a strong back and make a living wage. But with the emergence of technology and the erosion of, of, of the industrial base, uh, those jobs that black men usually had in urban areas, those jobs disappeared. 
In addition to that, because of white flight out of urban neighborhoods, which accelerated segregation, the jobs and the wealth left urban areas and was concentrated in white suburban areas. Additionally, uh, because of the way we, we did trade, which, uh, which benefited the, 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 the corporate class instead of the working class, we were, we were allowed corporate America to uh, ship jobs to low wage labor markets across the country. So instead of having those jobs in the United States in urban areas where you're paying people a living wage, we sent, ship, ship those jobs to countries like Taiwan where there was no minimum wage that you had to pay people. You could pay people slave laborers and that is because of greed. As a result of the not having jobs, to merely survive, black men went to uh, activity unlawful, but it was the system that put black men in situations in which they sold drugs. That's what did it. Now, for example, the same thing would happen to white America uh, during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic, if it were not for the $2.2 trillion economic stimulus package uh, that was implemented last year. So there was a stimulus package. People lost their jobs because of COVID-19. The government stepped in and the government says, we're gonna rescue you. That was not done to the black community. I instead of rescuing black people be because of the way the society economy sh uh, shifted, with no, no fault to black people, instead of giving us a stimulus package in the urban area of communities that have been segregated and redlined and gerrymandered, instead of us giving, giving black people a stimulus package, we got legislation tough on crime and mass incarceration. If, if the white community in America did not have the stimulus 2.2 .2 trillion dollar stimulus package, and whites who've lost their jobs and they got to feed their families, let me tell you what have happened. They would, you'd be out seeing pe white people doing the same thing that black people do. It's, it's, it's not crime out of greed, it is out of need. And the question of whether it's crime because the crime is really not the person who's selling the drugs, the crime is really the society that has put a person in a situation where they have to sell drugs with the lack of opportunity. Was Jesus a criminal? Well, it all depends on who you ask. Was David a criminal? It all depends on who you ask. Because if Jesus had done what we are told that Jesus did in Mark chapter two, in our day, Jesus would have a record. Because from the perspective of the ownership the class, the powerful, Jesus was stealing, according to Luke chapter, Mark chapter 2. Look at what it says. Mark chapter 2, verse 23 through 27 says this. It says, Jesus was walking through the wheat fields on a Sabbath. As his disciples walked along with him, they began to pick heads of wheat. So he's picking wheat in somebody else's field. Why is he picking wheat? Because he's hungry. He needs something to eat. So the first he said, Jesus to Jesus, look, it is against our law for your disciples to do that on the Sabbath. So Jesus broke the law because he was hungry. He did something unlawful and they are right. Jesus answered, have you never read what David did the time when he needed something to eat? The key is need, not greed. The word is need. He needed something to eat. He and his men were hungry, so they went to the house of God, ate the bread offered to God. Now, this bread that was offered to God was off limits. To go get this bread that was really for the high priest was against the law. But when you are hungry and desperate, guess what you do? You say, I got to eat. My children got to eat. So I'm going to do something that is unlawful. And Jesus is saying, look, the real sin is not that David 
went and got some bread to eat because he was hungry and his men was hungry. The real sin is how we have not provided opportunities for people to get something to eat and how we've created a society in which people have to do desperate things because we won't create equity and justice. So according to the laws of the day, Jesus broke the law, but he did not break the law. There's two ways you can break the law. You can break the law because of need or you can break the law because of greed. When the fat cats break the law and they don't go to jail, they're breaking the law because of greed. Greed is wanting more of what you already have enough of. If Trump goes to jail, it's not because he has a great need. It's just because he has he had greed. When black men sell drugs in poor neighborhoods and are drug runners, as bad as it may be, it is the society that has created the lack of opportunities and put black men in a situation where they have to do the same thing Jesus did. And that is Jesus did something and broke the law by eating on the Sabbath. And he broke the law because he wasn't supposed to do it on the Sabbath. And David broke the laws of the day by eating the showbread in the house of God that was supposed to be for the priest. Now, do you think David wants to go in there and get the showbread that's supposed to belong to the priest? No. If society don't want him to break the law and get the show bread the post belongs to the priest, then make sure that there is bread and opportunity for David and his men. Make sure that there is opportunity for all people. Make sure you have public policy such as here is this is what you can do to stop drugs immediately. And that is a jobs bill, a guaranteed jobs bill. The same what you had during the Depression where the federal government created jobs of fixing the infrastructure, paying a living wage, a jobs guarantee to the federal government will eliminate drugs because if I can get a job, I'm not going to be stealing the showbread because I can go out there and get a job and I can make money because the government has created a job, helped to create a job for me. You want to create quit drugs? Help people develop their skills. Let people go and to, to back to school, back to training, expand Pell Grants, tax these rich, greedy folk, make resources available and colleges tuition free and training tuition free so that people can develop their skills so they don't have to sell drugs. And then once you provide guaranteed jobs and tuition free education, then make sure you give people not minimum wage, but a living wage. The Biden administration is proposing a $15. Well, take it up a little bit higher. Let people be able to go to work, get a good job and get a living wage. Because if you have a living wage, then you don't have to sell drugs. You don't have to steal. In other words, we are creating a society in which we, we create desperate people like David and his men were desperate. That's why they got the bread. Jesus and his men and his disciples were desperate. That's why they picked grain from somebody's field without asking on the Sabbath day, because we have created a society in which we put people in situations in which they have to do certain things merely to survive, not out of greed, but survive, amen, out of need. And if we can create this type of society that eliminates racism, which is are giving people resources, A, giving people access, C, not judging people on the basis of their competency, I, creating opportunities so we can eliminate to a stimulus package in black areas that have been shut out of opportunities. You will shut down the incarceral state in, in the United States. This is the type of Christian public policy that Christians should be advocating for. And we are praying that this will come to pass even in our day. Thank you for joining me. Let, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and, and thank you that we can not only have a private policy in our life, but we can have good public policy that affects change and gives people great opportunities. God, give us a political agenda that reflects your will and help us to know what these things are and to push it through advocacy, the way we vault uh, and the, the things we talk about with other people that, that we want a just and a democratic United States of America. Lord, we feel it in our hearts 
and we might not see it in our lifetime, but help us to build a better society so that our children and grandchildren may live in a just and democratic United States of America. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Thank you so very much for joining me. Another powerful point to ponder. Uh, and if you don't have a church home, please contact us here at St. Stephen Church. Email us, newstart at sscLive.org. We'd love to have you become a part of St. Stephen uh, Baptist Church. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And as we close out, uh, let us remember what we say every day. And that is in COVID-19, during this time of COVID-19, you do everything you can to stay safe, stay sane. And if you can, stay home. God bless you.